Windless. What the heck is a windless, you may ask? Well, according to dictionary.com, windless is a noun used to describe a device for raising or hauling objects, usually consisting of a horizontal cylinder or barrel turned by a crank, lever, motor, or the like, upon which a cable, rope, or chain winds, the outer end of the cable being attached directly or indirectly to the weight to be raised or the thing to be hauled or pulled. Winch. But I prefer to define windless a bit more functionally. As you're about to witness, to me, a windless is the protagonist in a cautionary tale of actually investigating whether deficiencies on your survey actually exist. We have a horizontal windlass, not that different functionally from the one seen in this diagram from Maxwell. They're the manufacturer of our 32-year-old windlass. The drum or chain wheel of the windlass pulls the anchor road, whether it's rope or chain or a combination of the two, and then deposits it in a chain locker below deck. As you're going to see in this video, the chain locker on a Catalina 42 like ours is exposed, which causes some issues that I'm going to cover in a later video. For now, though, I'm going to show you the video of how our windless problems unfolded. Okay, so today I'm going to be addressing a problem we had identified on our survey that turned out to not be a problem at all. So that is where our windless mounts. It pulls the chain from the anchor up on the bow there and then stows it in this anchor locker here. Right now you can see there's no windlass mounted. So that's what I'm going to do now is start remounting the windlass. Hi there. So as I indicated here, on our survey there was a problem identified because this says if the windlass stops secondary to overheating, reset the breaker panel. Uh, windless switch and so that was identified as something that needed to be repaired. So uh, I had the electrician check the circuit. Oh, the circuit was all good. Uh, I disassembled the windless and took it into a shop and they tested it and said it's essentially brand new. So what we've come to the conclusion of is that this is an old sign. It should have been painted over, covered, something like that. So now I get to reinstall the windlass. So step one today is for me to put this base plate in here. Um, it looks a little old and uh, worn, but it, it all tests out fine. So I could just attach it to the hull here, but that's going to be a problem because then water can get in behind here, work its way in here and cause problems. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to use Cicaflex Yay! and apply a bead of Cicaflex around the this part of the base plate and around this part of the base plate so that then when I put it on here it will be well sealed against the elements. Before I do that though I want to clean this fiberglass. I have some isopropyl alcohol to clean off any oil or anything like that that might prevent the Cicaflex from bonding. Uh, and then I want to mask off the area around this base plate so that the Cicaflex doesn't bubble up and form residue on the fiberglass that looks ugly. That's just for aesthetics. So you might notice that I'm wearing nitrile gloves. Um, it's a good practice whenever you're working with any chemical to, to actually wear gloves to protect yourself. It just saves you from getting muck on your skin too, so that's what I'm doing. So, 
my gloves are off because my hands are sweating. <laughs> and But you can see what I've done is use the masking tape to make a template on the fiberglass. So now when I put the Cicaflex on here and press this on, it will go onto the masking tape rather than onto the fiberglass. A little bit will get onto the little uh, excess fiberglass there, but that's okay. That'll help it seal. Thanks. And now his lovely assistant Donna will go get him a new set of gloves. Yeah. This is how a pharmacist X does seek a flex. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's many, many craftsmen out there who might see this and go, oh, that's not the right way to do it. But this is why I have masked off the hull. Right. Now, if there is a small gap, which there is facing me, is that a problem? No, because it'll squish together. Well, it'll squish together. I'll also come back and look and okay. address any issues like that after. A gap here? Yeah, just very teeny tiny. And this is how a video a videoing pharmacist <laughs> assists. <laughs> our children, our poor children, never oh, have I a know. chance. Ah. You'll notice I have some paper towel here to wipe up any spills that I might make while the Sika Flex is still soft and workable. Because he's smart. There we go. So that is as much as I want to get out of this particular thing of Sika Flex. So now we will mount this in here. And then I'll go inside and Donna will film me attaching the backing plate. Okay. All right, so this is the backing plate that I spoke of. It will go up on the inside here. Um, you can see where the studs, the screw threads from the, the windless base plate that I mounted out there go. Yeah. So I'll put those there, and then I have nuts and washers that go over. I've lost one of the split locking washers, so I'm going to have to do a little search here for that. But if I can't find it, I'm leaving it on the most accessible stud so that I, I can get one later and attach it pretty easily. Cool. All right. All right. Hi there. All right. So it's been uh, 24 hours since I attached this base plate to the hull and the Sika Flex that I've attached is nice and solid now. Um, so the next part is to mount the gearbox on the other side of here. The shaft will be coming through here. So we're going to go down below and do that. It has been several days since I filmed the last part of this windless uh, video. And that's because I discovered that the crankcase here for the, the windless um, was very low on lubricating oil. And like most things on the boat, that meant I had to go to a store to get parts and uh, I now have that. So I have the right grade of gear oil as specified by the windlass manufacturer. And now I'm just going to add it to this crankcase to fill it up. The reason why I want to do this now is that although the manufacturer has provided this wonderful uh, view window and um, refilling port, that is actually just under the front deck and there's no way for me to get to it without taking the windlass apart. So 
Um, I'm probably not going to be servicing the windless gearbox again for another 10 years. I'd rather put fresh oil in it now. It is now time for me to put this gearbox back into the windless base plate there that you saw me mount before. So what I'm going to do is fit it into this space and discover that it's not going to work. <laughs> well, folks, the best laid plans of sailors and men sometimes don't come to pass. I did a very good job of applying Cicaflex and masking off the hull and doing everything just the way it should be. But as you can see by the fact that this base plate is in my hand again and not weather sealed against the hull, that didn't work out. The problem is that this base plate needs to actually tilt a little to get the shaft of the crankcase in and then it needs to be tightened on. I unfortunately attached this firmly and so now I'm going to use a different product. I'm not going to use Cicaflex, which um, this is what Cicaflex is like when it cures. So I'm going to scrape off all the Cicaflex that I put on and instead what I'm going to use is this. It's uh, butyl tape, and butyl is essentially uncured rubber. So it's quite flexible. It's sort of like plumber's putty if you've ever used something like that. What I'll do is I'll put a bead of butyl around the outside of this, around the, the gap here, and around the bolts, and then I'll attach the crankcase. That's the next scene you're going to see. I've now cleaned the base plate with Donna's help and now I'm going to apply a bead of this butyl tape around the, the edge. It uh, is quite soft and pliable and so it will squish in to fill in the space between the base plate and the hull and provide a weather seal as, as a result. It's generally a good idea to use more than you need um, because it's not very expensive and rather than getting a gap where you're going to get a leak. Um, it's better to have a little extra butyl that's going to seal. So I'll just keep doing this and then I'll film another scene. I'm going to be wildly optimistic and start putting the nuts onto the shaft here. Uh, I have to get them on a certain amount before I put the gearbox on. So hopefully it's going to work out. So if you see here, I'm going to try and point out there's this part of the hull that the gearbox was hanging up on. So I've now managed to tilt it a little bit. You can see that the shaft is not quite horizontal. So now I can tighten up those bolts now that I've got the uh, crankcase on and then I can put the nuts in from the, or sorry, the bolts in from the other side of the base plate that will hold the gearbox on. Uh, crankcase on and then I can put the nuts in from the, or sorry, the bolts in from the other side of the base plate that will hold the gearbox on. If you zoom in here, Donna, you can see what's happened. I put, as I mentioned, quite a bit of butyl, but it's just squeezed out of the, the seams, kind of like Play-Doh, trademark. <laughs> and now I can just peel it out and I have a good seal of it around the base. So now I'm going to put the mounting bolts through into the crankcase, which might take a little bit of wiggling uh, of the, the shaft here. All right, I know that looks kind of ugly, but that is now the windlass head reassembled. Now I'm going to go inside and put the motor on and then we can test it. I apologize for the strobing effect. That is my uh, LED headlamp illuminating this dark inner space. I've now attached the motor, tightened up all the connections, and hooked up the electrical connections. So now it's time to test the windlass. Let's test the windlass. Okay, that goes that way. And that goes that way. So, it looks like the windlass works. All right, of course we'll have to test it with chain and an anchor. So, 
that was a heck of a project. <laughs> um, it took several tries, like a lot of things on a boat, but uh, we did finally get the windlass rebuilt and reinstalled. And now we'll test it in the water. It's another warm day here on board Intention, and uh, I know I said I was going to show you the test that we did in the water with the anchor. I didn't film it, and I'm glad I didn't because it saves you hearing me swear a lot. Let me show you what happened. First thing I'm going to do is turn on the power to the windlass at the panel here. You notice the orange light shows that there's now power to the windlass forward. We're at the dock here at Canoe Cove, and I'm going to demonstrate what's happening with the windlass uh, and specifically with the anchor chain at the dock here, just because it's easier. I'm sitting in about uh, 35 feet of water here at the current point. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is get the chain from the anchor. I'm going to put it around the windlass here. And what you're going to notice down here is that this chain doesn't actually fit very well in the windlass. In fact, this link of chain can't fully pocket into the chain wheel here. And that's part of the problem. The chain wheel is made for 5 16 chain, and this is 3 8 chain. We actually want to keep the 3 8 chain, so uh, given that that's about $1,500 worth of chain, and it's going to be about $2,000 or a little more for a windlass, I'd rather get a brand new windlass than replace the chain with something smaller and lighter. So I'm going to lower the chain into the water now. I have the anchor over the bow roller. There's some tension on the chain, and now I'm going to roll the chain out. And you can see what happened immediately. The chain jumped out of the chain wheel and fell onto this pulley here and fortunately jammed up before the anchor went too far into the water. So what I'm going to do now is put the chain onto the chain wheel and try and retrieve it. Okay, so the chain is on the chain wheel again and I'm going to retrieve. But, as you can see, it's just slipping. <laughs> and partly it's because I can't tighten up the clutch cones nearly enough. Let's see. There we go. So it does retrieve a little bit, but then it slips. So I'm going to wrangle this back onto the boat, and then I'm going to take this windlass out. So that's our cautionary tale. If we had checked the windlass operation at first, we would have immediately discovered a problem. That could have quickly identified that the size of the chain didn't match the size of the chain wheel on our aging windlass, and we could have done exactly what I've just done, order a new windlass. But this video is already getting pretty long, so I'm going to save the installation of the new windlass for another time. Thanks as always for joining us. It may not always be sailing here on Sailing with Intention, but it's always boat life.